I'm uh, Alan Godfrey. I am the owner of Kokomo Express. How long have you been here at Prime? I've been at Prime for almost, I'm coming up in May, nine years. <laughs> Nine years. How many trucks do you own? Because you do own a fleet, right? I do. I uh, currently have eight. I have my ninth one uh, is ordered and hopefully will be in by July. Okay. What are you looking for in drivers? Because we are a training company, so if you're getting our pool of drivers, a lot of people are intimidated thinking that an owner op might be more... Um, may not pay as well as the company or they might be more strict or stringent or uh, another thing is like they might be scared to tell you they had an accident or something like that. So what is it that you're looking for in drivers and what can you let drivers know that as a fleet owner, that's what you're expecting? Well, obviously every fleet owner is going to be slightly different. Um, I am looking for drivers um, they just want the opportunity to drive. I don't like to micromanage my drivers. Uh, you know, they, they drive for my fleet manager as well, and all that's really between them. Uh, as far as pay, I usually try to find, I'm hoping that I find a medium spot between what company pays and what a driver might be making as a lease operator, and I'm trying to hit that happy spot in the middle. Um, I expect my drivers to pretty much run the truck, take care of the maintenance issues. Of course, those things are uh, are gonna be at my expense, but I wanna make sure they take care of the equipment. Mm -hmm. I wanna give them the responsibility and the, um, you know, the, the ability to make these kind of decisions when it needs something done to the truck. So, you know, let me know or just go in and let's get it done. And, um, you know, I really want a driver that's gonna stay with me for a long period of time. Um, I've worked in the past as a manager in a restaurant, and I know that, you know, a good driver um, or a good employee of any kind, the longer they stay, the more their value increases. And it just means I don't have to continually find a replacement for that driver. And I hope that if they have other goals, if they want to become a truck owner or a lease operator somewhere down the road, that's not a reason not to drive for, for me. I just want to help them reach their goals. Uh, if they want, um, to get home more often, you know. I don't uh, per se worry about whether they drive six weeks before they go home or three weeks before they go home. Uh, obviously, they probably wouldn't work if they were doing two weeks out and one week at home. That, that wouldn't work, but you know, for the most part, if they just took home time and something comes up at home and they need to go back home, go back home. If some you know, emergencies arise and I don't, feel that I should be babysitting them uh, on that. Now, obviously, if it becomes a problem in truck profitability or something like that, then it's something we can talk about, you know, but if, if issues arise at home and they need to take care of them, you know, by, by all means, you know, let's get it taken care of so that they can have, um, you know, a good driving career and, and, and uh, peace of mind while they're on, out on the road. Because uh, that just, to me, is going to make them a, a safer and, and better driver. Okay. One thing that company drivers get concerned with when driving for owner ops mm -hmm. is to be profitable, you guys need high revenue but fewer miles. Wow. And since we get paid by the mile most of the time, do you negotiate your pay somehow or do you make like a minimum type of? There is a, a, there is a minimum. Like um, obviously for, for me, if it's a, a 250 mile load and it's paying $800, that's like a great load. But you know, what's in it for that driver? They're a company driver that's only 200 miles they're getting paid for. Um, the bulk of this uh, really falls on the shoulder of my fleet manager. And it's a good question because I do bring it up with my all of my drivers and just kind of acknowledge the fact that we have opposite goals. <laughs> I'm trying to do less miles, more money. You're trying to do more miles so you can make more money and you're really not concerned about that. So. I motivate them uh, to consider the truck's, you know, revenue, uh, and if it's a load that does pay, that is less than 300 miles, and in this scenario, I can come up with that 
that extra money that they would have been making. So a minimum of $100 on a load like that to select on, on, on top of and additional to the miles that they got paid. So they're making $100, $100 just to sit for the day mm -hmm. and just drive the 200 miles. Mm -hmm. So do you have standards when it comes to like um, CDL issues, like tickets and accidents? Like newer people, I'm assuming, are going to wind up getting overweight scale tickets, for example, or even having an accident. You as the owner, you would pay the deductible, correct? Correct. So, but do you have any, like, do you have any set guidelines of, oh, well, you only get one ticket and that's it, or you get one accident and you're done, or is there some kind of guideline you go for, by? No, not really. I haven't had that problem yet to, to be forced into making that kind of a, a judgment decision. We, you know, I'm not a perfect driver. My first uh, year had my share of, of issues um, from lack of experience. And, and many of our drivers, for a lot of the fleet owners, are that. They're coming right out. They just upgraded. Some of our drivers, some of my drivers literally are, they saw an opportunity to get off the trainer's truck and upgrade above the, uh, the time frame that there wasn't a truck available uh, in these current times we're in right now. And... Uh, for the most part, they've been really good drivers for me. You know, they just need an opportunity to, to get in the truck and go out and do do the job. Now, Prime already has pretty high standards in terms of accidents and um, tickets and so on and so forth. And first and foremost, every driver that drives for me, first they are a Prime driver. Prime can terminate them. I have no say so whatsoever in that. I have to find another driver uh, if I don't want them driving for me. That just means they have, they have to go back and drive for Prime or somebody else. I can have them removed from my truck, mm -hmm. but they still are employed by Prime. Uh, the only thing that happens is they get a paycheck from Prime and I'm charged whatever Prime is paying them. Uh, whatever benefits, uh, if they have insurance, whatever the company is covering is charged to me. So I'm covering your benefits, sick days, holidays, that's all being taken care of and it's coming off of my expenses, but I'm benefiting by having you drive my truck. Mm -hmm. Again, if they, if they want to take two weeks off, been driving for me for a while, and again, I don't go, oh, you gotta do six months, because you know, I don't have that kind of time to take and be that uh, precise about how long you've done this or that. I would rather go to my drivers and say, hey, I just gave you a penny raise because you've been doing a good job. Um, if they need to take off for two weeks and go on vacation, okay, take two weeks and go on vacation. You know, park the truck safely, all the things you need to do. But it's not like, oh, well, I really can't afford for you to be off for two weeks. It's just, it just makes mm -hmm. kind of no sense to me. Mm -hmm. You know, you're pretty much telling them. I, one of the things I like about trucking is the ability to, to go on vacation or time off kind of whenever you want to for however long you want to. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, if they needed a long period of time, say they were planning a month or whatever, it would be something we'd talk about. Maybe mm -hmm. I'd encourage them to, to drive longer without days off prior to and after to compensate, but we'll work something out. Again, if they're a good driver, you make, you make the things work. So what if you hire somebody new um, to your fleet? Or how do you work out the training and what you expect for them? Do you wind up taking them out for a week yourself to show them how you expect your truck to be run? No, I do focus mostly on it being their truck. Okay. You know, in many cases with, with my drivers, I actually, if I've just got the truck and I put my logo on it, if they've driven with me for six months, then a lot of times, again, to make it their truck, I'll even go to the expense of, hey, what kind of, uh, you know, decals and stuff, do you want know, put your football team on it? Do you want to put... Uh, you know, how would you want to design that truck? Let's bring it in, go to stripes and stuff, and let's make this more your truck. Um, again, it, it, they, they're, if they want to get something done to the truck, even keeping it clean, you know, or need new equipment, a new refrigerator or something like that, it's, yeah. it's still to me, it's how do you want to do it? Would you, can you come into Springfield and we get a new refrigerator? Or whatever, or do you do you need one now? Go get it at Lowe's or wherever, and send me the receipt, and I'll reimburse you. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I just I I just don't. Again, nobody wants to be micromanaged to that point. We already have so many rules set out there, 
And if I've met them and interviewed them prior to them getting on my truck and we discuss things like how often to wash the truck. Well, we're, you know, we're not going to do it every week, but let's keep the truck clean. Yeah. You know, once a month, anytime you come to a terminal where it's low cost, by all means, get the truck washed. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I, again, I really just want to encourage them to take care of the truck as if it's their own. That's good because one of the things that company drivers, I have the ability to pretty much get my truck repaired at any time. You know, I might say, hey, I don't like the way this tire looks. I can take it into the terminal. They're going to make sure it's taken care of. And some drivers are fearful to try to get with somebody who owns a fleet because then you can turn around and tell me, no, you're not going to pay for a new tire. Right. You see what I'm saying? So that's really nice. <laughs> you, nice. You, you know, because we don't want to be, you know, I think some, some company, when you're just upgrading, you get intimidated. You're already terrified. Oh, yeah. And then you're terrified that you're going to bang up somebody else's truck, you know, as much as you'd like to make it. Well, I mean, every like truck that isn't, you know, the truck you drive is is Rob Lowe's truck. Right. You know, this is my truck. But does Rob Lowe double check on you all day, all, you know, all the time mm -hmm. and make all these decisions? No. It's your truck. Go drive it. Mm -hmm. You know, and when, you know, it gets to a point when my, in my uh, situation where eventually that truck is paid off. When it's paid off, I want it to still be in great running condition and mm -hmm. continue to be that way. And you can't do it by waiting until you have, you know, thousands of dollars repair and, you know, they're going down the road, maybe unsafe, you know, mm -hmm. just keep the truck safe, take care of repairs as we go, plan your, plan the repairs. So you come in the shop and you got a list, hey, look at my shocks, look at my battery, you know, these kind of things, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's too much of an inconvenience. I mean, in other words, it's, if there's a problem, like I had one of my drivers, his truck, the lights in the back wouldn't work. The switches wouldn't work. He had to do all the switches up front. Okay. But it was at his convenience, so he waited several months before we put it in a freight liner until there was another reason to be there, mm -hmm. you know. But that was his choice, you know. Um, again, I, I, I don't want to put a driver in a dangerous situation of, okay, we don't, let's keep running this bad tire, you know, or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. You know, let's get the tire or the axle or whatever fixed, you know. And usually... But you're right. I have had a driver recently came through Prime, and, and he did. He started the day. It wasn't a problem. At the time he got to Prime, he had a blown axle seal. Mm -hmm. You know, and he was apologetic to me. Oh, I'm sorry. We had to get him. Like, you, what did you do? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we got you got it. You got in. You got it fixed. You got back out on the road. Great. You know, that's all I can expect, you know. But, it, yeah, I, I just don't. Um, I mean, hopefully I choose drivers, that are, and I have been successful so far at getting drivers to take care of the equipment, mm -hmm. you know. So you said you don't micromanage, but how much responsibility do your drivers have as far as dealing with the fuel and choosing loads or rejecting loads, accepting loads? Because some people wouldn't want to be responsible for having to worry about your revenue. So how would they know, is this a good load or a bad load? As a company driver, you just take what you get normally. Well, and, and maybe it's different with different fleet managers on the lease side, but one of the things my fleet manager explained to me because we had a driver uh, that he got a load to Miami and being new, he was intimidated but to go to Miami. And I talked him into going to Miami and gave him some pointers on how to go to Miami. Nick, a week or two later, he wound up with a load that's now going up and he has to drive through New York or he could have gone around. And I was trying to explain that to him, but he also did not want to take that load because of where it was going. But it's a good paying load. And my fleet mayor's like, look, you, you need to take this load. It pays good. It's good for, again, there's miles and there's revenue for it. So it's good for the driver. And it's good for the, the owner. And uh, the only reason why he didn't want to go is, is because he was didn't want to go into that the Northeast or into Miami and stuff. Um, and he needed to understand that as far as the company is concerned, he's still a company driver. He just happens to be on a lease owner's truck. Mm -hmm. Now, so that being said, they really can't turn down loads. And even a lease operator they can't really turn down loads all the time. They kind of, you know, start bucking up against the wall. Now, Prime can't tell lease op operator what loads to take, but it gets to be a problem if you turn down too many loads. So, but back to my situation, that driver really can't say no. But if they really have a problem with the load, they should contact me, the owner, mm -hmm. and then I can get with sales and the dispatch and say, okay, I don't want my driver taking that load. There's not enough revenue in it for 
for me or there's not enough miles or there's too much time on the load and it doesn't benefit either one of us. Mm -hmm. You know, so they really, have, at that point, they have to get me involved. But if they have a problem with, again, I encourage them to just talk directly to the fleet manager. Mm -hmm. And my fleet manager does a really good job of understanding that we, me, the driver and the owner have a difference and he's trying to make sure they get their miles and I get the revenue. Mm -hmm. And he does a really good job with that. Yeah. A lot of people come from different areas, so there's a lot of people in the south that have never driven through snow before, mm -hmm. never driven over mountains. Okay, now I'm driver to driver. I can give you some pointers. Mm -hmm. The first time I went to New York, um, I stopped way out in, in Columbia because I didn't even realize there was nowhere to park. I was going to Brooklyn or something in Hunts Point, and I didn't know Vince Lombardi existed, you know? so. I'm trying now to get there in the morning from, you know, 100 miles away, you know, I think it's the closest truck stop. So, and as I mentioned before, that driver thought he had to go across the George Washington Bridge and didn't realize there's, you know, there's actually a way around. And again, it's just pavement with a bunch of lanes and you just stay in your lane and follow, you know, get to plan your route and work your plan. There's a way to go around it, you know. So... If that doesn't work, then of course, you know, give it the fleet manager, maybe we can get something else and keep you away from it. But eventually you're gonna to have to go there. And you only get used to New York City or these cities by going there. Mm -hmm. you know, avoiding them just prolongs it and actually reinforces your fear. But, uh, I, you know, again, I, I just finished training my son and he's a little apprehensive of all these same things because he's from Texas and snow and these you know, small, these big cities and small docks and all that, they're, they're kind of like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so understand it well.